guys, I want to welcome you back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking out this one M1A uh, SOCOM 16, that's a Springfield Armory 308 battle rifle out to the range. Uh, we're going to be doing some shooting at 100 yards initially with the iron sights. We fire some Agula 150 grain 762 by 51 ammo. I've never fired Agula before in any caliber. We'll see how that works out. And some uh, 147 grain PMC bronze 308 Winchester. Uh, as you can use both uh, rounds safely in this rifle, you just have to watch out for the grain weight uh, that you're running through the rifle. So 147 grains is a little bit on the low end, but for you know the 100 rounds that we're doing and the fact that we're not doing match shooting, this is mainly for me to see how well I can shoot this rifle uh, from a Caldwell lead slit, or just how well the rifle can shoot itself, I guess you could say. Um, after that, we'll take it out to uh, 200 yards and we'll see if we can hit a 24 inch gong. Should not be a problem. I don't know if I'll go out much past 200 yards, I'm not sure. Um, the optic that we'll be running on this after we get the iron sights uh, sighted in is a imitation Bushnell red dot sight that's been on my AMD 63 and it's been fired quite a bit and it still holds zero so I'm imagining I shouldn't have any issues with the SOCOM. Now this looks like a tremendously long you know, amount of eye relief. It's really not a problem because on the AMD 63 I've got a quad rail and it is a fairly lengthy distance away from you. You know it's towards the front of the gas rail. If you know much about AK-47s that's a little bit of a distance. So I'm, I'm confident that I'll be able to use a red dot with some accuracy. Um, but again, initially I'll have to do the iron sighting first, we'll show that off first, and then we'll do the red dot sights. Just because I, I'm not really able to easily co-witness with the red dot, it is a bit of a pain. And so we'll be adding the red dot a little bit later on in the testing. Um, one thing to consider about these lead sleds if you shoot with them is this uh, stability strap in the front. I pretty much have to run this um, optic towards the front of this Picatinny rail in order for the strap to, in order to strap the rifle down. Nice thing about it is because of the Picatinny rail, you have just enough clearance so that op rod can function without binding. Should not cause any issues. That was a concern that I had on the uh, M1 Grand. When I took that out, again, it's an awesome rifle. This is probably one of my top five. I mean, if I had to choose three rifles and three rifles only, I would take definitely one of these. Uh, pretty much any AR-15 uh, and just an AK-47. So this is definitely on my top five list of dream guns. Um, we'll be shooting at some Cabela's clear shot targets, and I'll be patching up the holes just to kind of make more use out of the targets. Okay, we'll be shooting these at, at 100 yards, and I don't know if I'll set this up at over 100. They might be kind of hard to see, but they look kind of cool. I've never used them before. They do a nice uh, yellow splatter, so it should be should show up nice on camera. And again, I'll be using my second camera for the target shooting, which isn't as nice as the primary camera that'll be filming me. I know I should probably flip that around, but anyway, we'll go with it. So there you go, guys. And again, this rifle is on loan to us from the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. His name is Stan. He's a great guy. I want you guys to definitely check out SS Pond when you get a chance. Um, all the contact information will be below in the video. If you watch my videos, you know that I always mention uh, Stan shot because he is he's been a longtime supporter of the channel and, and the viewers too so all right guys so there you have it I want to thank you for tuning in I want to thank you for watching and uh, we'll go ahead and roll that footage and uh, and I think we'll go from there so there you go all right let's get started okay guys we're gonna start off with uh, six rounds of Agula 150 grain at hundred yards uh, I'm gonna hopefully keep it as zero as I can I'm just gonna fire all six shots and uh, we'll just see where it groups. Now I'm gonna be aiming basically dead center. It might be off just a little bit, but again, let's just see where the six uh, rounds happen to land. So six rounds, 100 yards, Ocula ammo, 150 grain, uh, 762 by 51, uh, firing with iron sights. Uh, only thing I'm gonna say is it's a little hard to see where the front is, the front sight is, because of that uh, night sight um, insert that's in there, that Trigicon vial that's in there. And so anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So here we go.
in case the backup camera didn't catch it, these were my shots firing the uh, Aguila 150 grain at 100 yards. Not a bad group. I kind of messed around with the uh, lead sled a little bit, tugged it to the right and to the left. And that's why my shots got off a little bit. The next six shots, I'm just going to let it go naturally and just let it shoot wherever it can land. All right, so that was the 150 grain Aguila 762 by 51 at 100 yards with iron sights. Shut up and sit down. Okay, so with that uh, PMC, it looks like it was pulling to the left a little bit on the lead sled, not bad. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that, I can live with it. Um, the bullseye does show that I, in fact, able to hit it. That time, I just let the lead sled go, I made no adjustments to it at all. Okay, guys, the uh, Springfield um, M1A SOCOM 16 is an awesome rifle. Um, I absolutely love it, and I'm hoping I can bring it out again this summer. Um, only issues I ran into was it took me a few rounds to figure out where it was shooting and I uh, kind of made the mistake of only bringing two boxes of ammo with me. My bad, I should have brought out 500 rounds. Um, but anyway, after I got those, those 12 rounds put on paper, I decided to go ahead and mount the uh, imitation Bushnell sight, which I thought I had a pretty good sight in at 100 yards, but I took it out to uh, 250 yards and I was just shooting with the red dot sight. And I wasn't able to connect with the uh, steel gong at 24, 24 inches. It's all completely shooter error. Don't worry about that. It's, it's just the side. It's just me. Um, again, then this thing was sighted in for an AK-47. And I can usually do okay within 100 yards. And 250 was me being a little optimistic. So I burned the rest of the ammo I brought with me on that. But uh, overall, fantastic firearm. Stan at SS Pond, I want to thank you for letting me bring it out today. I had a great time shooting it. Uh, had a blast, no pun intended. And I'm hoping maybe I can uh, bring it out again this summer. Uh, hint, hint. So anyway, uh, we're going to take this home and get it cleaned up and get it taken back to uh, Stan at SS Pond. And uh, anyway, guys, I had a great day. It was a beautiful day today. It was like 50 degrees, very little wind. And uh, again, we're out here at the Rob Jeffrey Firing Range. I want you guys to check out the website. I did a little range video on it. Check it out. A little walking tour. And uh, yeah, from, uh, from uh, south of Lexington, Nebraska, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find me on TravisP11 on Facebook. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start bringing out some more of my other rifles and bring out definitely a lot more ammo. Uh, we'll get the um, uh, Mosin Nagant back out and just see what the lead sled can do for it. I'm pretty happy with the lead sled. It bounces around a bit more than I was hoping for, but this is a fairly heavy round. And it is really not that heavy of a firearm, to be honest with you. Um, so if you get a lead sled solo, don't expect, you know, just, just out of the box, just awesome, you know, marking on a dime precision. Uh, it takes a little time to learn how to use that thing properly, and this is only the second time I brought it out. So again, I'm always constantly learning. That's a great thing about going out shooting all the time. You're always learning something new. So uh, there you go, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and uh, as always, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe, and we will talk to you soon. All right, thanks for watching.